Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Office of Special Services and our first short share. You're here with Dr. Tara Reinhardt, Mr. Todd Hawks, and I am Penny Gregory. Today, we're going to be talking about um, a concept that has been really discussed a lot in our office and in some of the um, uh, professional development we've been having, and that's the concept of spirit murdering. Um, and this idea was um, first introduced to um, us through Dr. Bettina Love. Um, so we want to give you a little bit more information about who Dr. Bettina Love is. Um, Dr. Reinhardt, can you talk to us about Dr. Love? Sure. So Dr. Bettina Love is an award-winning author and um, the Athletic Association Endowed Professor at the University of Georgia. She is one of the field's most esteemed educational researchers, and her writing, research, teaching, and activism meet at the intersection of race, education, abolition, and Black joy. And so Dr. Love is concerned with how educators working with parents and families can build communal, civically engaged schools rooted in abolitionist teaching with the goal of intersectional social justice for equitable classrooms that love and affirm black and brown children. She co-founded in 2020 the Abolitionist Teaching Network, and their mission is simple develop and support teachers and parents to fight injustice within their schools and communities. Um, she's, she's just an amazing person, amazing author, and just such a message that we need to be open to hearing and move forward with. Yeah, and so she's also the author of the book, We Want to Do More Than Survive, Abolitionist Teaching and the Pursuit of Educational Freedom. Um, so add that to your, um, to your book list if you don't already have that book. So, when when you guys hear spirit murdering and in our context there it says um that is the denial of inclusion protection safety um acceptance um because of a fixed um structure of racism so so what comes up for you when you when you hear that um todd yeah i think about actions that we take either intentional or unintentional to not include other people so things we may say that don't honor someone else's culture their experience things we may say that we aren't aware are oppressive and uphold um, this ideal of white supremacy that has existed in our country um, and it just really makes people feel disenfranchised and and what's really terrible about that is that each of us have a light inside of us and um, a love somewhere deep down for who we are, where we came from. And when we spirit murder or make people feel not accepted intentionally or unintentionally, it can put that fire out and nobody deserves to have that, that mm -hmm. fire extinguished um, and their love for who they are in their life. Mm -hmm. I love how you put that because I, I was thinking about passion and thinking about goals and dreaming. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you say extinguish that light or extinguish that fire, um, you know, as an educator, we yield so much power with our students. And so to think that we could even unintentionally be doing that, um, it, it, it's definitely not why any of us chose to be educators. And, and you know, when I think about spirit murdering, I do, I think of all those things that you said, Todd, but I also think about um, that idea of humiliation and sarcasm. And I know in PROACT, we talk a lot about, you know, there is no place for sarcasm in, in the amnesty of Wayne Township, but um, it's that idea of humiliation. I mean, none of us want to be humiliated in front of our peers or our family, um, you know, thinking about social media and sometimes how that occurs so easily. Um, whereas there, we could definitely spirit murder our families and our students and our community we serve. And so we just have to be really thoughtful and reflective about our words and our actions and how they can be used as spirit murdering. Absolutely. Um, and so I would agree with both of you. I also think about spirit murdering in the sense of, you know, denying someone the ability to just show up as their authentic self. Um, you know, in all of the different ways that they identify. Um, I know we talked a lot about um, intersectionality and what that means to represent so many different facets of, you know, social constructs. And so, um, you know, 
how sad is it that we have kids who walk into school buildings and have to, um, I've heard Dr. Murph say this, kind of, you know, leave their culture at the door. Um, they can't just, you know, walk into spaces and, and, and um, be joyfully who they are, um, as Dr. Dr. Love references. So I definitely think about that when I think about spirit murdering. Here's the tougher question. How are we complicit? How are we complicit in this injustice? How do we do harm and damage? Um, I think sometimes for me these days, this whole idea of um, unintentional or implicit is a cop out sometimes. You know, um, I think I think at some point we we have to start taking responsibility for what for what we don't know um, and learn. So, what comes up for you guys when you think about that word complicit? So I think you are complicit when you let it happen around you and you don't say anything or do anything. Um, you know, in a group discussion in a meeting earlier on today, one of the teachers had said that, you know, when they hear a racist or sexist joke, they like to act like they don't know why it's funny and say, oh, is that supposed to be funny? Can you explain that to me? Mm -hmm. um, and put it back on that person. But that's how we can become complicit. And what I want to add here too, in thinking about how we can be part of things is we often separate this talk about this kind of work with equity and racism um, and think about it as focused just towards students. But we got to think about the people who work around us. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and I think personally in my life, there have been so many things, inappropriate jokes that have been said around me because people don't know me and who I am and what differences I have. Yeah. And it kills me, um, not because it offends me, but really that they feel that way. Um, which then really sometimes will knock down my respect for them a notch. Um, and so I think we have to be aware of how we're complicit in harming kids and adults as well. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. So um, because this is a short share, we're going to keep this short and to the point. And unfortunately, our time is up. But we hope that you will join us in um, watching these short shares. Again, we'll keep them very short so that you have time to digest and hopefully leave you just pondering um, kind of what the topic we talked about. And please reach out to any one of us if you'd like to continue the conversation, because that's what we're hopeful is that you we have ignited something in you that makes you want to either learn more or talk more about the topic. We appreciate you and be well. Thank you.